I love what I get to do, and let's just get it right after it. So first off, thanks for the opportunity, uh, Tony, the Galleon few, everyone. I saw the lineup of speakers you guys have for this this virtual event. What an amazing group. So I don't know how I got squeezed in. A few things about me, I'm a civilian. Uh, I never served in the military. I've had my private foundation, American Dream U, since March of 2003. I had a lot of black here then. Uh, brief history, uh, I was not a good student in high school. My senior year, I had a 1.8 GPA. I was disqualified from playing sports. Devastated me. I went to school to play sports. I had no reason. Didn't understand why they had classrooms. I thought they just needed fields and gyms. Went to junior college. Ended up going to college, uh, playing sports. I was blessed to play sports. Uh, for one year, I had multiple injuries, and, and I was out. Uh, and then after that, my junior year, uh, I was dating a girl, and I got her pregnant because that's what you do when you're still in school and you have no money, and she was the oldest of eight kids at a very religious family. They went to mass every day. I didn't know church was open on Tuesdays. I thought it was open on Christmas and Easter. So it was a little bit rocky start for me. Got out. Uh, I got a great job out of college, 100% commission. I didn't know what that meant, but that means you make no money. Clogged my way through, started my first business a few years after that. I just couldn't focus and couldn't work with others. Um, Focus has always been a struggle for me. That's why I think I struggled a bit in school. And that's where I launched my entrepreneurship career. And it was not a pretty sight. It was very rough go at it. But it got to me where I'm at here today. So what we do here now at American Dream U, uh, we've been at this transition focus since 2013. We've had about 175 events, 17,000 plus live attendees. Last year, due to COVID, we had to pivot to online live workshops. We focus on three areas, relationships, wellness, and money. Everything fits into those categories, relationships. We're talking about relationships through potential employers, through networking with your group to figure out what could be a good fit. Most jobs out there are not posted, or if they're posted, you gotta go through some random computer generated thing, reading your resume and doesn't pick up this or that. Very difficult to get a good, meaningful job with just a piece of paper and a resume. LinkedIn, we talk a lot about LinkedIn. And then we get after kind of what's going on at home. What do the relationships look like at home? So for me, I share some of my experiences. We bring in some amazing veterans and also non-veterans, some civilian speakers. But for me, my relationships look briefly like this. I'd come home from work late. Uh, I had three or four energy drinks plus two or three cups of coffee, was not sleeping well, made a ton of decisions every day. I'd go home and my wife, who was just watching our three kids, she's like, we really appreciate you. I got three things you can eat. And in my mind, you guys can judge me for this. I'm thinking, you know, I was coming home. Why isn't dinner on the table? Like, that's how I used to think. And so she would ask me three times. And finally, by the third time, I'd be like, just effing put food on the table. I can't make another decision. And so probably around six or seven years ago, I had this eye-opening moment with my relationship. And my wife had this conversation. She said, 90% of the time, you're a great guy. You're a great dad, a great husband. But that 10%, you just come home. You're unpredictable. I don't know what's going to set you off. So that set me on my path to really work on myself so that my relationships would be get better. So we talk a lot about that um, in, our, in our ADU live classes and in our workshops, we bring in great speakers that, that talk about similar situations. So very important, relationships and who you know is gonna get you where you wanna go for sure. Let's talk about wellness. All of us have something going on right? Physical injuries, mental injuries, scars, things from our childhood, programming from our childhood. I don't have wounds from um, going to war to being deployed, being in certain situations. I have no experience in that, so I don't want to relate anything that I'm going through. I did play D1 sports, had multiple knee surgeries, shoulder issues, you name it. Back in the days when I played, they would shoot you up with cortisone and send you back out. That was the deal. So I had no idea what the long-term effects is. I just wanted to compete. So my injuries kept me up at night, which if you don't get a good night's sleep, it's really rough. So we talk about 
well-being. What's your number one self-care habit that you can do that's non-negotiable every day? We got great speakers. We got Marco talks about stretching. It's a similar stretch to what David Goggins wrote about in his book, You Can't Hurt Me. So getting all that, that physical pain out and then talk about some of our patterns that we grew up with, some of the things that maybe we have to unwind and unprogram. Some of this stuff may sound kind of foo-foo and to be honest with you, five or six years ago, I'd be making fun of myself if I was watching this video because that was not me. Uh, to be honest, I would come home, have a drink and just kind of forget about things. If I'm being honest, maybe two or three drinks. I'd go to bed, I'd suffer, I'd wake up in pain, wake up and just do it all over again. So we talk a lot about, you know, when you're in pain, it's tough to make difficult decisions. And when you're not in pain, your mind can focus on things that are important to make better decisions. So wellness is just such a critical part and we all neglect it. Let's talk about money. Money's really important. Is it all about making a ton of money when you get out of the military or if you're changing careers at this point? You know, there's very little correlation between making a ton of money and happiness. I never believe that until I got to hang out with some incredible uh, speakers with American Dream U, six or seven billionaires, people worth hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm not saying they all weren't happy, but I saw some very, very successful people that just were not happy people. And so started doing some study. There's a great book called Blue Zones of Happiness. It talks about the correlation between making money and happiness. It's really not there. Now, I'm not saying money's not important. Money allows me to do what I do here at American Dream U. I'm a non-paid employee. Uh, I've funded the organization for years, so money is extremely important. So we talk about how to negotiate salaries, how to bring up that conversation when you're looking at a potential job. When you're in the military, you don't negotiate your salary. It's just you go up in rank, and that's what it is. It's published, all that kind of stuff. So you have very little control of it. When you get out, you have more control. So we also talk about finances, like what can you do before you get out of the military to prepare for that financially? I've had about one-on-one, -on -one, about 17 or 1800 one-on-one -on -one conversations, and almost all of them wish they had done something different before they got out financial-wise. Maybe not about that car with that big payment or a lease, or they got this, themselves into obligations that they just couldn't make. Now again, 2020 happened, and civilians were out of work. A lot of civilians were out of work. A lot of small businesses were out of work and closed permanently, a lot of them. So how do you prepare for something like that? So financial is a big issue. It also is a big issue for me personally, going back to relationships. I would always look at the credit card statement and I'd be like, honey, what are you spending this money on? So money was always a big issue for me too. And I always compared myself financially to everyone else. And that made me sick. So again, this might sound kind of crazy, foo-foo, all that kind of stuff, but these are things that when I have these one-on-one -on -one conversations and we talk with soldiers and spouses in a group, Marines, all different branches, it's a human issue. It's a human issue first. So I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be a part of this. And I appreciate Tony having me in the Galleon Few. And so again, you got a rock star lineup. Like I, I can't wait to be uh, sitting there with my journal and pen and taking notes and learning and then putting these things into practice. So um, I have no one behind this camera to stop it. So I'm gonna run around and stop it. But I appreciate it. Again, this is Phil Randazzo, American Dream U. Excited to be uh, with you guys this fall. Take care.